Well, hello, it is 11 o'clock and we're going to go over the basics of finding and valuing properties. Um, a few items, if you have any questions, just type them in over here in the chat box. And I'll make sure I um, answer all the questions. Um, so just brief, so we are going over finding and valuing properties today. Um, we've gone over before how to fund a property. These are all basics to get everyone up and going is what we call free in three, which is getting you to the point where in three years you're free to do whatever you want. That doesn't mean you necessarily get to um, check out and not do anything, but you have enough income either from your flips or your rentals or you have the money to fund your own flips instead of using a lender like us. Whatever it is, it's to get you on track. But to get on track first is to understand the fundamentals. How do you fund something? Then how do you find the properties and how do you value them? So you kind of um, have two of what we consider like the main points that you need to be very successful. So this free and three, we came up with it because we have helped um, 10 plus people over the last few years become not only free, but substantially high net worth. So the people who get in, get moving, figure this out and put in the work. This is a very realistic, um, goal or outcome here is to be free and three, but you need to know, you need to understand how do you finance something, um, what are the tricks and what are the things to get to financing? So we did a basic on that. Um, and then coming up every week, we're gonna have a basic on money and a basic on properties. Properties today, we're gonna to go over like how to find them, where are the sources, and then also how to quickly value them. So you know if it's worth running out and looking at them or maybe having your realtor or even your lender even do a deeper dive into them. Fix up. We have a couple of videos that are either on or coming out on our YouTube about finding good contractors. Um, not of, you know, we have some fundamentals, but I wouldn't say that this is our strength is, is the fix up because we don't really get involved in that. We are the money person, but we also know a lot about valuing properties and, and where they come from because we see them. Um, like I said, last week we did um, funding your flip. So if you weren't able to join us on that, we can either send you a video copy of one of them and or you could join us next week. Um, I think we're having that on Tuesday at 10 o'clock going forward. So who we are. So for 21 years, all we've been doing is helping investors, not only with private money, um, partnerships, contributions, buying notes. We've also done traditional loans for rental properties, um, commercial buildings, anything else like that. So we are the finance team to help people get from hard money to traditional loan as fast as possible. We know that most people are not going to stay with hard money forever. So we want to give you a path to get out of it, get into where you're financing your own uh, or have a bank. So the other thing is we're going to go through these things quickly because we want to keep it at 30 minutes, um, a little less than 30 minutes, so people can get on with their day or if this is during a lunch hour. So we're going to kind of um, get through a lot of information on these basics. Um, one of the fundamentals we come back to is the buy. The money in real estate investing is in the buy. So the better you buy a property, the more likely you're going to profit on that and maybe profit a lot on that property. So the tighter your margins, um, of course, the less likely if something comes up, you're going to make a profit or much of a profit. So the buy is very important in this. It's probably the number one fundamental of buying properties at the right price, buying other market properties. That being said, the only way you're going to find good properties is you're going to have to look at a lot of properties. Uh, we have a couple people who look at five to 10 deals a day. That doesn't mean they spend a lot of time because once you get good at this, 
you'll understand like this property does is out of my area where I want to be. This property is a condo and I want single families. You could go through a lot quickly, quickly, and then when you could quickly um, also comp them out, value them out, you could find out which ones you want to take the next stage, which is maybe go look at them or have your realtor or um, lender, if they do it, comp it out, you know, get a second set of eyes on it. But first of all, you need to be able to do this. Um, just like I just said, the what we're talking about is in the buy is where you're going to see everything. So that's where your profit's mostly going to be. So this is a numbers business. So we try to keep the emotions out. When we see emotions take over, when people are in the bidding, that's where they start losing money. I had a customer last week. He was going to buy a property for 370. It was a great number. He bid it up to 440. It was a so-so number. He didn't do enough due diligence. He found out afterwards that there was it was an auction and there was a 10% add-on to that. So he took something that was 370, ended up paying um, a little, almost 490 for it. So it went from profitable to probably he's going to be lucky to make his money back. But he was kind of bought in at that time. <coughs> he let his motions overtake his numbers. You want to make money in this? It's it's really just looking at the numbers, seeing if it works, and then on to the next. So let your numbers determine if you buy or don't buy. And you must look at a lot of properties to make and find the real good ones. And we'll go through exactly what it is to, you know, fixed up in cost and a lot of other stuff. So um, we'll dive into this a little bit now. So number one, you have to look at a lot of properties. So where do you find them? You can go out and do it yourself. You could do PPC. You could do Facebook marketing, mail outs, so we're knocking everything. But typically when you're starting out, I mean, some people will get to that point. But typically when you're starting out, you're going to look for two groups, which are wholesalers and investor-friendly realtors. And we'll show you how in your local area to find these people. But number two and three, when you're starting out, these are the people who, who are out looking for deals and can send you deals that you can look for. And as you have more and more time, maybe you could do some more research, do some more marketing, find the properties without either of these. But right away, we're going to look at wholesalers and investor-friendly realtors. So wholesalers, just um, a quick, brief um, overview. I mean, they are individuals and companies that their whole job is to find under market properties. The majority of those they sell to people who are in the fix and flip or fix and rental. They sell them to other real estate investors. Some they keep, but the majority of them, their whole goal is to find something for one price, sell it for a little bit more and leave enough on there so an investor can actually go out and flip it or keep it as a rental. So Wholesalers, you know, number one on our list here for starting out and where you find properties, you really need to find as many as possible, depending on the size of your area, like in Colorado Springs, Denver, whatever, you know, there could be 50 wholesalers here, small to large. You need to get on as many lists, get to know as many as possible. The same with realtors as we go through this, you want to find kind of you know, four to five in different areas, because some may be south of the area, north of the area, some might be out in the country. Um, you want to find as many investor-friendly realtors as you can. But So where do you find them? How do you create this list? Two of the best sources that you could go out and ask are the form on Bigger Pockets. Bigger Pockets is the largest um, website forum that's you know, just for real estate investors. So you could go out to this prop, this um, bigger pockets, go into their forms, and you could just say, hey, I'm looking for the wholesalers in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Greenville, South Carolina, wherever that may be. You want to be able to go out there and people just say, who are the wholesalers? Wholesalers will respond to you. Um, and also, who are the realtors? Who are the realtors in this area that are helping investors? Because you'll find realtors out there who are just on bigger pockets because they're looking for other investors. 
Connected Investor, there's another place you can go and get connected with other wholesalers, investors. Um, these two forms and places you should be able to find and have a good start. Um, also, most wholesalers work with other wholesalers co-brokering because they all work or the majority of them work together as a property comes in for them to dispo it, they call it, to get it sold. So if you have a wholesaler, ask them who else in the area is a wholesaler and get on their list. Getting on their list means that they're going to be sending you deals as they get them through email. So find out, get some referrals here, go into bigger pockets. Facebook, there's a lot of Facebook groups for local real estate investors. So if you go into Facebook, type in real estate investing in your area, you get on there, you could say, hey, I'm looking for wholesalers and real estate in, uh, agents in our area. You'll pick up some there. All of these places, you'll pick up a couple. You can also go to live meetings because they're back. Probably not as um, fruitful as some of the other things because I see I don't think most wholesalers and stuff go to those. The other way you could do it yourself is go to Google, type in buy my home because the people who have all those websites are either realtors or wholesalers who are trying to buy under market properties from people trying to sell them. In the same sense, they're going to take those properties and they're going to turn them and sell them to an investor. So if they're buying a house, they're also going to look to sell it. So through there, you could contact them and say, hey, if you ever sell any houses, let me know. I'd love to get on your list. Nine out of 10 of those companies that are looking to buy homes are also the ones who are selling them to investors. You could do a wholesaler search too. You're not going to find as many. But number two, if you just go into Google and type that in, you'll find a bunch of people who are buying homes and looking to sell them. You just contact them. They'll have a contact thing there. They'll have a phone number. And you just say, hey, we're investors and we're looking to get on your buy list um, or sell list, whatever they're going to call it. You could also start with a couple of the national companies like Net Worth, New Western Acquisitions, um, We Buy Ugly Homes. All of these companies also have a very big, they have a footprint in a lot of different states and they buy homes and they sell homes. That's their whole goal. They buy them under market. They either keep a few of them, but most of them they will sell. So you can start with getting on these national companies lists and seeing exactly what comes through. Because once again, all we're trying to do is start the flow of properties coming in that you start looking at and starting to think, is this an area I want to be in? Is, you know, some people like the country, some people like the city, some people like the burbs. Um, so some people like condos, some people don't. Just depends. So you need to start getting a feel and find out and figure out what do you want. And so you, when you go to these people, you, you, you know and you sound like um, you're seasoned and a professional. So these same areas here, you know, you're going to find it in one and two. You're going to be able to find realtors also, investor-friendly realtors. Number one, most realtors are not investor friendly. Most of them are just focused on retail buyers, first time home buyers, move up buyers, 55 and old, wherever they have their thing and that's what they want to do. Most of them do not work with investors. So don't be turned off if you call someone and says no one works with investors. There's probably only 5% that really work with investors. So there's probably 20% that'll say, yeah, we do, but they really don't. They just say that because they want some kind of business. But there are real estate agents who search for properties that are under market, they market for properties that are under market, and they're looking for buyers. Because ideally what they'll do is they'll sell you a property and they'll make a commission and then they'll get you to list it with them and make a commission. So the investor realtors who do this very well have a, um, a strong business, but you also have to locate them. So if you call a Remax office or you call a Keller Williams office or whatever, finding it, you have to ask specifically for one that is working with investors or not. Sometimes better just to find them on some of these other 
places like the people who are buying the homes or the bigger pockets or whatever, because you know that they're marketing out there for investors too. So finding wholesalers, finding investors, very key, but it's also as you're starting, you, you know, these people want to make sure you could buy and that you're serious about it. So they want you to be prepared. So when you talk to them, be prepared, you know, look at a few deals before you just call someone, take some time, a deal may come and go, but if you're not prepared, you're probably not going to stay on their list either. So, um, number one, have your funding ready. So if they ask you, Hey, if we give you a property, do you have the loan or do you have the money in your account or do you have your business partner set up to close on this quickly? Um, so that's the, the one thing is, is they want to know, you know, no BS. Are you going to be able to fund this? Um, also know what you want. There is no investor who wants every deal that's out there because they don't want a pop top or they don't want a land deal or they don't want a condo or they don't want a place out in, you know, the country. There's, you need to know what you want. Is it a three bedroom, two bath with a two car garage and what you don't want? Um, Cause you don't want a bunch of stuff sent to you that you'll never do. Because once again, if it doesn't fit your numbers, if it doesn't fit what you like, more than likely you're not going to make money on it. And, you know, practice before you reach out and practice really means looking at deals, understanding deals and, and understanding the numbers as you talk to these people. So we're going to, kind of start now because we're a little over halfway through in quick valuations like stuff that when you look at a property what do i need to know right away and how do i do it quickly so i know if it's a deal or not and if i could should bring it to my if i have a realtor on my team who could do a better bpo for me because they have software or a company or if i'm going to run it through prop stream or whatever so Three quick values, value add. That's all we work with in real estate investing is value add properties. That means we have a property as it sits. We're going to add something to it. It may be a property that we're going to fix up. It may be a piece of land that we're going to divide. Um, it could be property we're going to pop it or scrape it and build a new house, whatever. We're going to take something, we're going to add to it, and the value is going to be more than what we have into it. That's where the profit is. So we do value add properties in real estate investing when we talk about, you know, non-retail stuff. You could go buy something on retail and there's no value add, but we're only talking value add stuff here. And then you have two other values. We've gone through this in the, the funding side too. You have the as is, what is it worth now? And then what's it going to be worth after? So what is the after repair values? A term we use a lot in the mortgage industry, the hard money industry. But after repair value is your, call it your selling price, your appraised value, whatever. What's it going to be worth after I've done everything? Because those two numbers, if you know what it's going to be worth and you know what you paid for it, the difference is your gross profit. In that gross profit, you have to have a profit for yourself. You have to be able to, you know, use the money for fix up. You're going to have to pay a realtor when it closes. You have to pay for the money. You're going to have to pay taxes and insurance. These numbers, this is where everything has to come from. So you need to figure out your after repair value as soon as possible. And your after repair value will start with what are you going to do to the property? So some people go high end on property rehab. Some people go low end. Some people are in the middle. So whatever you're going to plan and do, you could either start with like, hey, here's what's selling in the neighborhood. I'm going to do those kind of finishes or these are the kind of finishes I like to do. What are properties that are to that finish sell for? Because you got to remember there's going to be a family. There's going to be someone who walks in, looks at your property compared to somewhere else. And they're the ones who are the market is going to determine your sale price value right now it's a little bit hotter so it, it helps but those things will stabilize too so what finishes are you going to have and what's your competition are there a lot of homes listed right now in this neighborhood are there no no properties listed you're going to have to know these things and we're going to kind of go through this really quick here so you just need to make sure when you're looking at this and you know what you have to put into it 
is there is there a profit there? Is there after I buy the place, sell it, can I fix it up and make a profit from the property? Because that's the only reason you do this. So when you're comparing properties, when you're comparing the property you're looking at and you're comparing to what's selling in the neighborhood, you want to make sure you're comparing finishes and condition that are the same. So you don't want to look at something that is, um, you know, something where they have granite in and you're going to put in for mica or something. Those two are going to be different valuations because, yeah, someone may come in and want to buy it, but then an appraiser is going to walk in and say, like, yeah, it's not going to appraise for what you want. Um, total square footage. So if you have a 2,000 square foot house, you want to comp it on properties that are very close to that square footage. You don't want, you know, like, you don't want to compare it to a 1,000 square foot or a 3,000 square foot because they're just different. And finished square feet. So we're comparing. We want to make sure the, the properties that we're going to compare this to to get the after repair value are very similar in all of these things. In finished square feet, uh, which means maybe the basement isn't finished or um, maybe there's a room over the garage and it's not finished, whatever. We want to look at all of the things in finished square feet too. Bed, bath, you know, is it a two bedroom, one bath? And we're comparing it against a three bedroom, two bath? Different numbers, lot size, some areas that matter, some that doesn't. And does it have a garage? What are all the amenities? And we're going to go through like a little example here as we keep going. The other thing you don't want to do is start comparing properties that are over, if you can, over major roads. Like I'm in one area and there's a freeway right between mine and the comp next to it. Those are two different neighborhoods. So you want to make sure that the subdivision, the comps are as close and like as you have. And that's where some of these things you're going to be able to do right away. And as you get more and more experience, it's going to become easier and easier. But having a realtor or someone on your side, too. And then there's also a couple of software programs out there that can help with this a lot. Um, I always tell this example. Right behind our office here, there's three subdivisions. And it's they're divided by a park and a two-lane two road. Nothing big. But on... One, you have a low end, maybe those homes sell for 400, you cross a road and those homes maybe sell for 550. Not a big difference in square footage, big difference in construction and amenities. Then you cross the road, it's kind of like a triangle, you cross the road up. Those homes go for more like eight to a million. They're all within a mile, you know, like if you circled a mile, they're all within that mile. They're all, one road across from each other, but the difference is sometimes 100% difference. So you have to make sure you're comparing properties in the same subdivision that are alike, because they may have different amenities, they may have different kind of build qualities, and you'll get really good at this the more you do, the more you do, the more you do. So where do you find comps? Where do you find these ones that have sold? The easiest and cheapest is, is you could just go into Zillow, type in your address, and then there's like three buttons you can pick for, you know, like sold properties, for sale properties, or for rent properties. You pick the, I think it's yellow, it's the sold properties. You want to look at properties within the last six months. So that'll pull up properties that are close to yours. And you can start going through and say, okay, mine's a ranch. This is a ranch that's sold. Same square footage, all these things. So you can start looking and getting a feel for what it would sell for. Getting down to an exact number probably would never happen, but you could say, hey, this is going to sell for between 320 and 330 and doesn't make sense within the lower end to do it. There's also software you could buy like Prop String, Prop Stream or Pins where you could go in, type in the address, and it will help you comp stuff out. It will give you, I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks a month for one of these. Um, but you could go in and use that. I think as you start, you just start with looking at deals through, you know, Zillow, Redfin. I think even e-appraisal is still out there, and it it's free. Um, look at these to look at different properties in your area. So what I want you to also just see, if you haven't seen it before, 
This is what an appraisal grid looks like. So when an appraiser comes in and does the appraisal for the person buying your house, this is what it's going to look like. They're going to compare different properties. If you look at line one, subject property is that first column, then it goes into the next two columns is a comp, and then the next two, then the next two. So what you're going to find, you know, like here's an example of square footage difference. So in column two, you see that this our property has 2,550 square feet. And as you jump to the next column and then skip a column and skip a column, you see that they had to compare it because they only could use sold in the last six months. The first one was 2,663. So it is 113 square feet larger. That means it has a value of 11,300 more. That doesn't seem like much, but you go to the last column. This property is you know, let's just call it 800 square feet less, 768 less. The difference is 76,000. That's the difference in value given because of square footage. And that's why it's important to do like properties. The first two that are 26, which is a little bigger. The next one is a little bit smaller. Appraisers like to bracket your home, meaning they want to look at something a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and make sure the numbers come up but you wanna make sure you're not too far off or you'll get a huge adjustment like this 76. This is an actual appraisal on a conforming loan. And then, you know, like here, here's finished basements and what the difference can be. It could be anywhere between like the $18,000 in column four because one is finished and one is not. This in column, this one over here in column three and four, they have a larger basement, but zero is finished. So they get a little for that, but they get hit for not finished basement. So you could see when the appraiser is going to come around, they're going to adjust for anything and everything they can. Here's like a garage. So ours has a three car garage. The ones that have the plus 8,000, they only have a two car garage. So they're $8,000 less, even though it has a plus there. It's just how the math works. It's, it's actually taken away. So, you need to find like properties or as close to like. It's always good to have one maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit larger. Do your best. This is all practice to number one, find deals that you can start looking at and number two, running through quickly to comp them out. Once you get good at this, it shouldn't take you more than five minutes to know if a deal is worth diving into. Once it's worth diving into, maybe you could use PropStream Maybe you could have your realtor do a CMA, um, BPO, whatever they do, or have your real your lender look at it too. They'd be happy. So, you know, now we've kind of looked over the funding, how to get it. Now it's looking at properties and finding those properties where the margins, the numbers make sense to actually um, do. I do have... Um, I believe this is the right one. This is just a little spreadsheet on helping you quick deal analyzer. I just put it in there. You can download it if you like. That should help you. And like I said, there's there's some software like PropStream and stuff. Now we should have some fundamentals on purchasing, finding them, financing them. Um, and then it's just really deal structure. Once you have these things working with lenders, it's a lot easier to call them and say, hey, can you look at this? Can you help us with this? Um, because we, once you have at least that stuff done, it's easier for us to do it. And we have a lot of resources like out on YouTube. There's a lot of videos on, you know, credit and, you know, there's one coming up on how to, how to find a contractor, stuff like that. Get as much knowledge as you can, because the more you know, the faster this will go for you. The first three to six months may seem a little slow, but then it really picks up speed. So... If you have any questions, let me know. But we have, you know. So I it was just asked, what about permits for building? Is that the investor's responsibility or the contractor's? The contractor should get permits, but it's the responsibility of the investor to make sure the contractor understands they need permits. Because a lot of contractors, if they were given the option, wouldn't go through and get permits. So 
as an investor, if you're walking into a property and you have a contract coming up, you need to let them know, like, we want everything permitted. Um, because there's a lot of contractors who will just, if you don't tell them that, will just assume you don't want them and they'll do everything outside the um, permit business. So make sure you communicate with your contractor exactly what you want, what you expect. Um, I was a little tougher right now because homes are a little bit tougher. They're starting to get easier to find contractors. There's just less of them out there right now. So finding good ones and having a good relationship with them will keep them coming back to you, paying them on time, but also just keeping them accountable. Because if you don't, if you're, if you think you could just go out, hire a contractor and show up in a month and the property's done, they have other things going on. So maybe they have another project and those people are on them a little bit more. That's where they'll be working. So the contractors, it's a, something you just have to manage and hopefully you find the good ones they're out there um, they want to work with good people too so if there's no more questions we're a little over the 30 minute mark but that's all right um you'll be sent the video of this next week we'll have the hard money and we're we're working on one because credit is so important as you move along this path that we you know, we're going to do a couple on credit too because the better the, the credit, the more options you have on the financing side, plus the return gets bigger. Because if you're paying, we just priced out a guy for a um, a no income investment loan to keep an investment property. He has a very low FICO. And if he just worked at his FICO to get up 20 points, it would save him a point and a half on the interest rate, which on the two properties was almost 500 bucks a month. It helps and is worth you know taking care of that. So to get financed with us, um, what you can do is send me an email at Mike at Hard Money Mike, and we'll send you our other oh, portal. Our portal, portal just has our application and stuff. We do everything in-house. There's only a couple of us, so it's quick and easy. Um, we get stuff like tax returns and income and all that stuff, but that being said, it's more based on the deal. And if we could do it, we're not looking for someone with perfect credit or, you know, huge income. Our goal is to find the people that we could help through this process and, and do it right. So if you want, just, you know, reach out to me at that email and we'd be glad to send you out how to help you get financed. Any last questions? Perfect. I appreciate it. And uh, everyone have a great day.